Right, well, everyone, welcome back. We're on here from the London Craftsman. And thanks for coming back again. And today I'm going to be running through a few, few things that I'm doing in my workshop. Let me just flip the camera around. So, loads on at the moment, really busy, and we're definitely not getting affected by the coronavirus at the moment. So let's run through a few, a few things. So we've got tons of birch, birch everywhere in this workshop at the moment. We've got about two and a half, three grand's worth of birch lying around. All right, so we've got four clients, and this particular one that Sean's on at the moment, it's a new one that's just come in. As you can see, so, it's an entire bedroom suite, all out of birch, but this client, uh, she didn't like the birch edges, which was madness. But anyway, each to their own, and they wanted it lit um, or edged. So that's been edged in birch, um, iron on edging, uh, courtesy of Cutting Edge Workshop for us. And it has actually transformed the look of the boards. They just look a bit Ikea-ish now, I'm afraid to say, yeah. don't they? They just look a little bit too perfect. You know, when you don't see those birch edges, it really does transform it. Really nice boards though, everything is crisp. High grade birch. And this company that does it for us, cuts up for us, look, we get stickers on everything. And it's all cut up with a CNC machine and edged with their really expensive edges. So it just saves us time and ultimately saves us time and money by us not having to do it ourselves and it'll be so much more accurate. Um, so that's one that we're doing right now, which just came in yesterday. Um, and it consists of one, two, three, four, four units, a desk and two bedside units and some floating shelves. So that's what we're doing at the moment. Sean's on that right now. And you can see it all lying across the walls here, all stacked up. More pieces over here. We've got drawer components. Um, Sean just did a bit of rebating because the back of our carcasses for our, our um, desk and our bedside tables are the backing is being rebated. We rebated the backs of these carcass pieces along with our drawer pieces on our table saw, same way, leaving a nine mil, no, leaving a four and a half mil tongue by eight mil deep. Uh, let's move on to another job. Not again, birch, and this one here is like a corner unit. There's one bit. This bit will go in the alcove, and this part is the return for that. A few drawers, and this is a mixture of painted doors and birch doors. As you can see, there's a couple of levels here. You can see the way it's stepped back there. So there is a door that fits in this little rebated section here. You can see the overhang of the ledge. Um, and these three drawers, they are again within this um, shelf so they're all flush this this and this and a couple of doors here and a, a door here tiny little ones they're all painted but the rest are birch this was a lovely job to do but man did this take long to mark out to design not even to mark out to design to work out how to get the corner junction to work um, with each other. Obviously this unit butts up against this unit. You can see the cut out here. There's two levels here. This top runs through 21 mil and this, these sides, they're further in. A bit tricky and it's a corner unit. They wanted to use the corner. So I've had to make that work with a little corner section, which hasn't been glued together, but ultimately that will sort of rest in that corner as such. Um, to make the corner doors work. There are the drawers, little mini drawers. These are all the doors, the birch doors. You see the routed in handles, they look really nice. A few of the shelves. We've got another ledge to go on here, which is 18 mil. So this is gonna be beefed up at the end um, to look like 36. And they wanted it to look like solid birch, the top. So we're gonna have to edge the top of the ledge once it's all built, 
and the ledge has gone in and it's double thickness, we're then gonna get some 50 mil iron on edging or some solid lipping and edge that top ledge, edge the ledge. Say that more than five times, Sean. Can you do that? Edge the ledge. Edge the ledge. Edge the 10 ledge. times. Edge the ledge. Edge the ledge. Loads of cuts. Let's move into here. So basically that was second customer, a lady called Arabella. She wanted three pieces of work, that's one. And in this room, there's, this is in one alcove unit. Above this alcove, there's gonna be floating shelves and in the other alcove, there's gonna be floating shelves. So this is part of a floating shelf media unit sort of section in her front room. And then, here we go. That's what it's gonna look like. Again, you can see chimney breast. There's floating shelves on this side and then floating shelves above here. And birch, 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 all the car carcasses birch and then draw fascias, draw fascias all painted. And there we go, we're all ready on those. All the handles have been routed out. All the edges have had their treatment. As you can see in my videos, how to treat MDF edges. Works a treat. Um, we've also used some dark primer on these and sanded them back, especially when the MDF goes fluffy in here. Give that a couple of coats and a couple of sandbags with P240 to be ready for the sprayer to give us a, a chance. Tiny doors, <laughs> just about works with two hinges. And these are the drawer fronts. So these are gonna go sort of like a racing green um, color, which is all ready. And they wanted it in a mat, a wipeable mat. So we're using Cova Plus vinyl mat. It's a water-based paint. It's a matte finish, but a durable version of it. So that is job number one for Arabella, this unit. Job number two for Arabella is a kitchen unit. This is all white. In our kitchen, adjustable shelves here, three shaker doors and a little space for little logs to be in. There's, I'm guessing, storage for like plates and ornaments. Um, this is going to be all white, and again, we're going to use the Cova Plus. This, but we've already got, we've, we've got a white version ready to go. There we go. That's what we're using. We're going to be using an acrylic primer undercoat for this paint because it's quite a chalky paint. I'm not going to do my usual technique of using it as three top coats. I'm going to prime with an acrylic primer undercoat, because I just don't want the paint to chip off. Um, already started a few bits here. So that is all matte, and then we move on to this unit. Again, Arabella, all white, same paint, and already done. So here we go, we've got one section. This T section here is actually this section here. So we got it fixed, so we once we painted it, we don't see the screw holes and we don't see any pocket holes anywhere. It's already been pre-painted, will we'll have already been pre-painted, taken to site like this. So the underside of it, we won't see any screw holes and we won't have to do any touch-ups while we're on site. And this is some of the MDF here. Basically, this job and this job, all the MDF that you can see here, and all of the MDF that have already had initial one coat of primer um, before my primer, before my sprayer decided to need a service and uh, stop priming properly for me. I've got a few pieces done and we've got backings. So that is all those two units. We have also got a job where a customer wanted just panels made for their kitchen to refresh their kitchen. And they just stated that they wanted standard MDF. They were happy with that, so it's customer's choice. And that is gonna be painted. Again, we've got a diamond eggshell mix for that. That is a cream color, I believe. Um, so that's a really, really durable paint. If you're going for durability, it's Dulux Trade Diamond Eggshell is the one to go for. And we got these panels pre-cut, pre-edged with edge, um, MDF edging tape and John's gone over those with a radius cutter on our little uh, Makita router trimmer. Trimmed every component. The customer doesn't even want hinges on this because he needs to position them in his own way. 
he's revamping his old 20 year old kitchen and he knows where all these hinges go. So he's going to do that once they've been painted. So they've been trimmed. All the trimmed radius um, round overs have been then sanded and all the faces have been sanded with P240. So they're ready to be painted cream. So that's another job. That's client number three. Client number four, a job in Holland Park is this gate, which you probably heard me talking about in my Festool video, which I said, this is gonna be paying for my Festool Domino machine. And in fact it is, which I'm happy about. Um, but this one is all ready to be painted. It's gonna be painted in a durable white eggshell. Um, perfect job for a sprayer. If you're gonna paint anything with a sprayer, something like this is absolutely brilliant because can you imagine how long it's going to take you to paint this with a paintbrush properly? No brush marks, no drips. Realistically, if I'm going to hang that up, I'm going to put one screw at the top, hang it up from my bar at the top, get rid of my bench first and give it a light dust. That's going to take me no longer than one to two minutes to spray. Can you imagine how long that's going to take if I spray, if I had to paint that by hand? Half an hour. Then I've got the post with this little section here because I need to return it. This staircase handrail, new post, shall I say, was on the skew, not in line with each other. So we've had to build a little section here and an extra new post there to um, fix the gate to. We've also got a, magnet, a, a magnetic latch, 50 quid just for that. Proper latch, no, no screw fix job. Really nice magnetic high-end latch for this gate because it does have to look nice at the end of the day, being in a nice um, house in a nice area. Um, so really happy about this one. This is the one that I showed you on my um, Vestal um, unboxing video that I said I bought the, the Domino machine for just to build this. I do have footage of me building this, so that is to come, um, which I'm excited about because it was the first job I used my Domino machine with. Absolutely fantastic. And I do not regret buying that Domino machine a single bit. So that is job number four. All that to do. Um, and on top of that, we got our custom bench, which I keep on going on about and you keep on asking me, how is it gonna look? And this pile is just getting bigger and bigger. This has been about a month and a half of collecting. So I was ultimately gonna put my Dewalt planer thicknesser in the bench, but it's a bit old and crusty, it works. If anyone is interested buying this, let me know. I don't really use it. It's a working planer thicknesser and I've had it for a while. It works absolutely brilliantly, but I have bought myself a brand new Makita version. The 2012 NB version, 20, 240 volts. I've used it a bit on this stair gate to reduce the size of these new posts. And God, is it a fantastic tool. How have I lived without one for so long? This was in storage for such a long time, I hardly used it. But I've used this now and it is fantastic. This is going in my new bench, um, which I am building. Um, and I, it's just gonna simply be on the bottom um, of one of the carcasses on a shelf that pulls out um, whenever you need it, attached to a hose that when you use it, the hoof turns on and it sucks the dust out. And to be honest, that is the main um, spec of my bench. Everything here, all the tools that you see, whenever you turn a machine on or a power tool, the hoover will turn on and suck out the dust. You can see I've got some 50 mil flexible, durable PVC hosing for all my runs to go to the chop saw, to go to my router table, to go to my, my planar thicknesser, um, all my power tools, oh, lots, lots of things. Let's run you through, through, run you through a bit, few bits. So we've got the Bikita vacuum. What model is this? It's the VC2012L. I've tried it and it's, it sounds 
oh, it's, compared to a Henry Hoover, which I generally use, this is like the Rolls Royce of Hoovers. Done a lot of research into this and it's a fantastic Hoover. Turns on when you turn a power tool on. So my bench, which you will see in the future, it's a video to come and I will have plans to come in the future. Um, whenever you turn a power tool on, you turn the chop saw on, you turn the thickness saw on, the table saw, because my table saw is gonna be incorporated. Yep, you're right, that whole table saw, barring the bottom bit, is gonna be incorporated into this bench. And if you turn anything on, it's gonna turn this vacuum on and ultimately gonna suck the dust out. Let's move on to these bad boys. So, because all my extraction is all gonna be interconnected, I've got all this pipe work here, 55 mil tubing, I've got my 50 mil hosing, and whenever you turn something off, if I don't want all of the hoses sucking at the same time, I've got these valves. And these work perfectly, with all the hosing and all the, the piping that you can see leaning up against the wall there. So for example, if I'm not using the table saw all day, I, want to, I lock that off and I want to lock the chop saw off so I'm not losing suction, I could just go underneath near my table saw because this is where all the valves are going to be housed on the hoover. Just lock it down into the lock position um, and then I'll get more suction to the rest of my tools. So I've got seven of those, all just come from China, taking about seven weeks to get here. But they're here now, and they're fantastic build quality. Um, and that is gonna be part of my extraction, so I'm really happy about that. I've already done my drawings for how I'm gonna have it all connected, where all my pipe work's gonna be run. I've got my Makita chop saw, brand new, not been used, bought it a month ago, but again, it's for this bench. It is, let me give you the model number. It is the LS1019L. I think it's 600 quid or something like that. Um, slide compound miter saw. So it, the, you do miters both sides, 260 mil version, powered 240, not battery. And the special feature about this whole bench is that this chop saw is gonna live inside the carcass, but when I want it, drum roll. Sean can have a drum roll. There we go, and then we've got a scissor lift. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, for dirt bikes, we've got a scissor lift that drops down from 300 mil off the floor, all the way up to 700 mil high. So this is gonna be incorporated into my bench. It's taken a bit of planning and the plans are nearly finished where this, it all works. So you, I don't even need to lift a flap on the top of my workbench. Once it's all done, it'll be hinged. It's a foot, foot pump on the end. So you literally just pump your foot and the chop saw should rise up, lift the flap on the top of my bench and this will click directly into position without having to, the need for putting any clips in or any pegs to keep it in position. Really excited about that. And the great thing about that is on the top of the bench, I've got all these metal T-tracks. It's about 200 quid worth of T-tracks and stoppers. You can see measuring tape stickers, they go on the end. So once that is up, there'll be aluminum channels on the top of my bench where I could do cross cuts and lock the stopper in position. Um, so those T-tracks are gonna be incorporated for the chop saw and also for my router table. Let's see if I can get into it. So what you see here is a Jessam Routar Lift Prestige. Can you see the image? So basically you attach your router to the bottom, you wind it up and down and you can wind your cutter up and down. So the idea is this goes near the end of my um, bench, near where the table saw is gonna be, um, in a little corner. And when you want it, you wind it up. When you don't, drop it down. It's gonna have a good suction at the bottom, so it's gonna be boxed in underneath the router, so I get good suction from underneath. And I'm gonna make a fence at the top so I can suck the dust in from the top. So hardly any dust should be able to get out of this router lift, shall I say. All right, what else have I got? Um, I've got a new vise. These are all the components for my um, suction, I've got a cyclone for my new hoover, so that'll be incorporated into the suction. Cast wheels, have a look at these. 
absolutely fantastic. 80 quid for a set of four. I've got eight because this workbench is going to be 1.6 by 3.6. It's going to be massive. It's going to be massive. And it's going to weigh a ton with everything in it. The table saw in it, the hoover with all the extraction. We've got a chop saw. We've got a thickness saw. We're going to have power tools. We're going to have all of our power tools in, in drawers. We're going to have screws. We're going to have sandpapers. We're going to have everything basically, including laptops and bits and pieces, maybe even a screen that pops up so I can use SketchUp in within the bench. Everything is going to be in this bench, so it's going to weigh a bit. So I did invest on wheels and each set of these wheels, each set of four holds a ton. And you literally just turn this and this little rubber stopper comes down. So if my floor is out of level, I could just, when I've got my position of the bench, wherever I want it, I'll just drop these rubber feet down and take the stress out of the wheels, keeping the bench nice and level. Got myself a new bench, um, got myself a new vice, which is going to be incorporated to the end with a nice wooden handle. Just thought it's actually pretty cheap, this an Amazon job, but it suits. I didn't want it too big and bulky, but definitely need a nice vice. Got all these power strips. There we go. And we're gonna have three or four of these dotted around. Obviously, whenever you turn a power tool on, that's got to be attached to the hoover. So whenever you turn something on, the hoover turns on. I'm gonna have phone charging. I'm gonna have radio within the bench. I need to charge my power tools and my batteries. So I need lots of power dotted all around the bench. Um, what else have I got here to show you? I've showed you, what is at the bottom? Oh, I showed you that chop saw down there, haven't I? I think the most thing, the, the thing I'm most excited about is this lift with the chop saw, dropping it up and down. There you go, we've got some new vice, some clamps. On the top of the bench, we're gonna have dog holes everywhere. We're gonna have those uh, metal T-tracks on the side of our bench running all the way around. So we can clamp um, doors and large panels to the side of our bench. The legs of our Bench are gonna have dog holes too, so we can put pegs in there and rest material on the pegs, then and clamp it to the side. Tons of stuff. And that's ultimately gonna free up space in here because ultimately that table saw is gonna be part of the bench. This bench is gonna go, that bench is gonna go. Um, and then I'll be able to bring in, basically the only thing in here that's gonna be, because everything's gonna be incorporated into my bench, is the bench. That is going to be the only thing in here. So that means I can bring my mortiser in and my bandsaw and my spindle. And they can be dotted around here, here, here and here, leaving all this wall space all the way around my bench to work, to, to lay my work on. And ultimately allow all three of us or even four of us to work on a bench at any one time Anyone, someone can be using the table saw on the bench, someone could be using the chop saw, while somebody's still working on the other side. The bench is gonna be so big that all of us should be able to work on it and not have to move anywhere to pick up a power tool, to get extraction, to get the compressor, anything like that. It's gonna be all incorporated within this bench. That is the theory. And we're looking forward to it, aren't we, Sean? God, we're looking forward to it. I've spent, I've probably spent 50 hours doing plans at the moment, up to date, and drawings, because the, the idea is once I've done the, draw, the drawings and the plans, you know, I will be able to put it on Etsy and give other people the opportunity to purchase the plans and make their own version, because there is going to be a lot of engineering going into it to make it simple, to make it easy to build, it's all gonna be made out of birch strips glued together, so there's no machining as such. It's just gluing the ply strips together to make sized pieces like the legs, 72 by 72, which is four strips of 18 glued together at 70, 72 mil wide. So for example, that's how we're gonna make that with the carcass within the framework to make it as a cube. It was gonna be really easy, so I'm really excited about that. And um, we just got so much to do at the moment. I'm just doing work at, in the evenings, just doing my designs, cracking on until it's, all the plans are finished. And then one day in the next few months, we're gonna get started on it. Because the plan is, we're gonna fix the ceiling. 
We're gonna repair the roof. Once we've done that, we're gonna build the bench and then we're gonna respray the whole workshop. Possibly change the floor. Not too sure. There's a couple of burn marks on the floor, which we may change it because of the burn marks. Um, but it's holding up, seven years old. But that is the plan. Repair the roof or ceiling, make the bench, respray, get it back to new, get it to a nice proper joinery shop. Well, you know, I know we do joinery and furniture making and mainly wardrobes, but I want it to be, feel nice where, you know, when I was doing this, this gate, it felt right. You know, getting back on the tools with solid timber, not sheet material all the time, get into this sort of work a little bit more like I used to back in the day and getting these tools out. You know, having everything here, having everything to hand, making things nice and easy, everything has got a place. It's gonna be so, so nice to use. So, that's what this video was about. I was actually gonna incorporate making something in this video. Um, I'm gonna be making a draw um, using just dominoes and no rebates, so that's to come. I was gonna incorporate into this video, but just looking at the timer now, I'm not even stopped for 26 minutes. Uh, <laughs> it's not like me, I'm usually quite quiet. Aren't I, Sean? <laughs> Apart from when I'm singing. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, I'd love to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. You will not be disappointed if you subscribe. They've got lots of content coming up. I know I'm a little bit different from everyone else. Do things a little bit different, make things, spray things a little bit different. You can just see here, has anyone got a spray room like this? Has anyone got a workshop over there with sliding doors? No, probably not. I do things a little bit different. So if you like my style and you don't find my voice annoying, <laughs> then subscribe and like, that'd be amazing to get some more followers, get some, get build up the channel a little bit more. Um, and hopefully we can uh, carry on the journey together. Anyway, gonna leave it at that. Crack on spraying, because I've just got my sprayer back from the um, Spray Direct, Kent Maidstone. They do our servicing. I had to do the re new repack the pump. So that's just come back. And as I've just spoke about earlier, I've got all this MDF to spray. This whole pile here, this whole pile, three coats both sides. I've got that Gates paint, three, three coats in a different paint. I've got all this to spray in another color paint. I've got to spray all of these green. I've got to spray all these trims. So there is a ton of stuff to do that I need to crack on with. Get the filters in my spray booth put in, set up my paint and get cracking. So with that being said, I'm gonna love you all and leave you. Um, John, do you wanna say bye? Bye bye. <laughs> it looks like a little ant down there, isn't it? Let me go all the way back. All right, this is me. This is me, one wall. Wow, uh, you look like a little dot down here, mate. <laughs> uh, all right, stop delaying it, Ryan, and go. All right, see you later. Ciao for now. Bye-bye-bye.